den wir auch vorbereitet zum Einbau. Mhm. Jetzt haben wir die drei Hafer schon vorbereitet. Ah! Und es fehlt ein Vierte, damit wir den auch einbauen können. Mhm. So, there are four steps when you build such a diamond detector. The first step is to attach the detector into the housing. This is shown here. The second ste step is to cover the housing completely in order to avoid any external influence. We only want to measure the muons, but not any signals which might be induced from the surrounding. Step number three is to put the diamond detector into a housing, which makes it feasible to mount the detector onto the plates, which we will see later. And certain diamonds uh, have a fourth step, namely they are connected to a so-called pre-amplifier, which amplifies the signal which is generated by the diamond electronically. And how many of these will be installed? We will now install seven diamonds. We will s install seven diamonds on five different locations in CNGS. This is, this is the, the diamond itself. And diamonds provide the sensitivity to the measurement which we require. In a second step, the diamonds are packed in RF tight packages. We only want to measure uh, the muon hitting the diamond, but we do not want to measure any disturbances, yeah? which might be caused by, by any electrical signals or by any electromagnetic interference whatever may occur. So this is the second step. And in a third step, we take this diamond detector and we put it into a housing. Yeah? We put it into a housing to provide mechanical stability. Yeah? This is the box. On top of the box, there is a hole as there is a hole in the cover of the diamond. Yeah? So finally this is how <laughs> the boxes look like. And these signals are the same when muons departing to Gran Sasso hit the detector. So whenever muons hit the detector we get an electric signal and this electric signal gives us the time information of the departure of the muons from CERN. And the diamond detectors, they have one speciality, namely that these time stamps which we are applying to the muons, they have a very high precision, a precision better than one nanosecond. Yeah? And the effect we're measuring, or we are, we are investigating, has 16 nanoseconds. So the precision of measurement is much better than the effect we are measuring. And this is why we are using uh, diamond detectors. Take another diamond, the number 58. I connect the diamond to the preamplifier. Ah, I can show you something more then, if you want. Yeah? And then I switch on, I switch on the, the electronics. And now I attach and now I switch on the scope and you see again that we are measuring very very nice pulses as we will measure later on. In CNGS we get many many particles yeah which means the detector will partly be used without amplification and amplifier and partly it will be used with an amplifier. It affects what, what you see here. Yeah. These are single pulses. Okay? And these pulses are very much the same as if 
in CNGS, muons hit the detector. So whenever particles hit the detector, you see electrical signals. Uh, and this is the way how we, how we measure the time of departure of the muons in CNGS. 57 goes here and 58 goes here. Yeah? Why we connect the preamplifier in order to amplify the signal? Yeah? Because in, in this case, yeah, this box will be mounted in a location with a low signal. These two. They will be mounted in pit 2 on the left and right side. So there is low muon flux and therefore we get low signal out of the sensor. And that's it. Yeah? So, that's... If a muon beam comes along, a muon pulse comes and hits the detector, the detector generates a signal. Yeah? And the signal is amplified in the preamplifier and then it is recorded in the in a certain database yeah but the point now is that the signal yeah moves along with a high speed yeah? i show it slowly but the signal moves along through the cable and through the connect and then again through cables this movement takes time so if we want to measure the arrival time of the muon, we have to compensate for these propagation times. Yeah? And for this it is very important to know about the time, the transition time yeah, of the signal through any electronic devices, but in particular through all cables which are connected between the diamond and the data storage. After the publication of the um, results of the neutrino time of flight measurements in September last year, there were of course big excitement and so we, we, we certainly were and still are skeptical. So we, we tried to do most of it to improve the measurements, to understand it better and also to find in case there are any systematics. So we, we are all thinking about additional tests for measuring this time of flight of the neutrinos and also to improve the measurements and find uh, ways where we can get rid of any of these systematics, of any properties which could have caused also this um, time of flight being faster than photons. So in end of October we set up a different type of beam which was a very short pulsed beam. It's like the LHC bunched beam. So we did not send any more a beam which is 10,000 of 10,000 nanoseconds long, but a beam which is only two nanoseconds long. So you really get a short tick signal. So you also get the time measurements. The start time of the neutrinos is also a tick, a short, a really a short timestamp. And then you measure the timestamp when the t uh, particles arrive in Gran Sasso. So you re have really a direct link between these two um, start and stop measurements. And in case there would have been any, um, any, any changes in the properties of the time distribution of the start time due to the target, due to the horns, to, due to whatever, you, this you don't see anymore there. This, you get rid of that because you just have a quick pulse. So these measurements have been done in, uh, with, uh, within 10 days, end of October, beginning of November. And uh, the people in Gran Sasso took data, data and uh, the results of, they had about uh, the order of 20 events, neutrino events, and the results, what they had, were the same as the results what they have shown before. So meaning the neutrinos also there were faster than photons. This was one test now for, again, measuring the time of flight with different types of beam which, are sent from, which were sent from CERN. 
but still, I mean, we still have to understand. There are still many things what we have to understand. So, for example, we have to still make sure that we understand the time measurement at CERN very well. We have to make sure that we understand the time measurement in Grand Sasso very well. And for this, we want to do, we are doing addi still additional tests, and that's what we want to do also this year again. And for exa one example is to measure the time, the starting time of the neutrinos at CERN in another way, in an additional independent way. And that's what we are doing with these muon detectors, what we, are, what we want to install here now. We did already some first tests with these detectors also at the end of last year's run. Um, and these, uh, these detectors show, showed very good results already because they have also able, they are able to measure really the time profile of the beam when we send it from CERN towards Grand Sasso. Um, and we want to do this, to continue with these measurements during this year, getting much more statistics, and also have results with this, again, what we will have, uh, this bunched beam. So we will start with the nominal beam, again, with this long beam, which is 10,000 nanoseconds long. Um, also with this long beam, we can measure the time structure of the particles measured sent from CERN here very well. So this 10 nanosecond uh, signal shape, time signal shape, we can measure very well with these new detectors here also. Um, <coughs> but we also then want to, certainly want to get data with the bunch beam. So that, and then we also measure this short signal, the start time, and not anymore with the detector which has been used last, uh, which has been used to get all these results which have been published ya last year, but also to, to do this measurement with the, an independent detector, with an additional detector, which is this muon detector. So these new muon detectors, they are installed um, at a new position. So the neutrinos, how we are producing them is in a, so, so let's say, conventional way. We have the protons extracted from the SPS. Uh, then they hit a target. And in this target, we are producing pions and kaons. These are short-lived particles. We have focused them in, them in focusing magnets, which, are called, which we call horns and uh, reflector. Um, and then these pions and kaons are decaying into muons and into muon neutrinos. And then at the very end, so this is really all along the beam line. So we have the target, we have the horn and the reflector. We have a one kilometer long decay tube, where they are decaying into muons and muon neutrinos. We have a hadron stop, which stops all particles which, we, uh, which are still left. And then we have only the muons left and the muon neutrinos left. The muon neutrinos are then going towards Grand Sasso. And the muons, they are measured in muon detectors. So we have two muon detector stations, and they give us a, really an online uh, quality assurance of the neutrino beam itself, because the muons are the sister particles of the neutrinos. So when we measure, when we know, know, have all the properties and we know the beam of the muons, we also know how the beam of the neutrinos are. And it's exactly there where we are stalling now these uh, muon detectors, which are, which are special detectors. They are diamond detectors. And these diamond detectors um, can have a very fast, they are very fast, so they can measure really the time profile of the muons. And all the measurements before, where we got all these results now of the time of late, have been done much more upstream with the, uh, where the proton time profile has been measured. So these are the protons which were extracted from the SPS and then before they are hitting the target. <coughs> so now we have two points which are one th about 1,800 meters away. We have two GPS timings for these detectors. We are, we are carefully, of course, we have to carefully uh, measuring the, the, the time delays of all the cables. And so we are doing this also again extremely carefully, again with a cesium, with a cesium clock and with other methods. And then we compa can compare these two timing stamps that we get for the particles. And of course, they should compare and they should be the same which shows that we have two independent measurements then of the time starting point of the neutrinos. The tests with these detectors here now are to measure the, the, to measure the systematics 
any systematics at CERN. So to, to be sure that we, the timing measurement at CERN is correctly done. This is with two independent ways then. Of course, I mean, this does not yet compare the results with the Gran Sasso experiment. So this, these are all the next steps what have to be done. So in Gran Sasso, they also do, they also do cross checks again of their timing measurements, of the arrival time measurements. And also the distances will be remeasured. Um, also in Gran Sasso, they want to do independent measurements. So there are several experiments. There are in total four experiments. So they want to set up their, their own independent timing measurements there. So we, it, we do, the aim is to do a lot, a lot of cross checks to be sh to really sure that these measurements um, or the results stay or uh, are not holding anymore, but just to make sure that everything is correctly done. And there are also other experiments worldwide. So there is Fermilab. They are also taking data. Um, um, they are also measuring now the time of flight, so we have to wait for their results before one can really say anything. So we need, I think it's important to have independent measurements also at different institutes worldwide. It's, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting time at the moment. And, and um, I, am, I, am, I was skeptical. I am still skeptical. Um, of course, it would be very exciting if this is true, if this becomes true. Um, and at the moment, the, the working is it's very nice, it's very exciting, and, and there are so many ideas coming up, and it's, it's a very nice time now.